coming. Now, if it's a whole school, it's different. Right. But if it's a small class, have the class, 30 people, 60 people, have them come to the office. It's big enough to house 100 plus, right? And so you know, we can, bring them in. We can start something right here, just in challenging your listeners to establish a mentoring program, especially businesses or churches or programs to invite young people to do just what you saw. I will tell you this, every fifth Sunday, we totally let our young people take over. For example, a young person will call, take over the platform with me and welcome. A young person does the meditation. A young person does the announcement. A young person does all we take, the young person does the offering. Young, we totally turn over our service on the fifth Sunday. They're involved in the music. So instead of just seeing me welcome, it's a young person who will be up there with me doing the entire service. So we take our fifth Sunday and it becomes totally youth orientated and guided. So what I'm gonna do, Mr. Liddell, is I'm gonna find a young person who will come over there with you and be there so you can take that young person under your wing and you can share with him what that's gonna be. I'm gonna find out a person or two who wanna be there. Right. I think that's great. And I noticed that the youth theme is going to be present this upcoming Sunday, right? It's yes. a youth service, and there's going to be this uh, Vision Male Vocal Ensemble. I'm really singing. looking forward to them, what, from the Detroit School of the Arts? They'll be there singing. Right, exactly. Yes, mm -hmm. yes they'll be there. Okay, great. You know, and this one other thing, that right. you mentioned about um, some parallels, you know, in the Jewish community. One thing that I noticed in the Jewish community is that oftentimes Jewish parents when they have their small children, they'll name a profession or a career for their child. When they introduce them to other people, they say, oh, this is Noah, you know, and he's going to be a rabbi, or, you know, um, this is Jessica, and she's going to be a doctor, you yeah. know, or this is Elliot, and he's going to be an engineer at a very young age, and that really sets it, yeah. the whole mindset, you know, the, the precedent for them, you know, and it keeps them on track and it's a source of pride, I think. And what do we, like what, what do, we do in our community? We what say, do we do? We say, what do you want to be? Right. Yes. Oh, I yes. want to be a football player. <laughs> <laughs> or a rapper. <laughs> right, right. I mean, what there's do you want to be? There's a lot be? of money in entertainment, but, you know, there yeah. are other options. So, yes. Amazing stuff. Let's go to the phone lines. Uh, Ellis Liddell. Um, Reverend Greg Geis and Attorney Tracy Martin. Let's go to Rick. Rick has been waiting. A question or comment? Well, I have a question and a comment. I, I really love hearing, uh, you know, you guys speak on the issues. And I learned a long time ago the utility of a mastermind group. Uh, in terms of many of the people, you know, that uh, add and below the national poverty level, though, I think something comes up. And it's, uh, you know, you're kind of like, you know, don't have the means to listen to me before you invite me to listen to you tell me about me. Mm -hmm. That causes some resistance. Mm -hmm. And I find that to be a case in organizing from the ground up. Now, if you're organizing people who already have I mean, a, you know, a positive mental attitude, uh, you know, a sense of direction, um, you know, and, and a sense of relationship with the people they're dealing with, that's one thing. And over the years, we found that a lot of our problems, though, uh, cause us to have to address people at another point, people who are not quite at that level. And I'd like to get the guests' um, ideas or, you know, uh, feedback on that, because I've long suggested that we're at a point now where we need the mutual agreement-based communication. The talent may not be getting us as far as we need to go, as fast as we need to go, and with a system we can evaluate. And so, hey, May3.com, guys. Thank you so much. Let's go to Steve. Uh, Steve has a question or comment. Thank you, uh, Rick. Let's go to Steve, please. Very go into your guest. Yes, First of all, let me, let me say uh, I think it's powerful when many of today's young boys think that rites of passage is having sex with a, a girl. Uh, many of the rites of passage for women or young girls think it's having sex with boys. You know, we're totally out of order. We've gotten away from our cultures, our traditions, and we let other people define us. I'm going to say something to Ellis Liddell. He may not remember this, but I'll never forget it. One day I went into office. This is when he was beginning to be a financial planner when he was across the street from Lawrence Tech in the uh, Prudential building or the tower building. 
I interviewed with him, and he told me something. He said he was a track star. He said, it's not about money. It's about how you present yourself. He said, get yourself a navy blue suit. Get yourself a black suit. Get yourself one pair of black shoes, one pair of brown shoes. And if you want to be in the business of money, black folks tend to look at your shoes in order to get whether they're going to decide to do business with you. And you've got, got diversity when you buy a black and blue, blue suit and black and brown shoes. So he may not ever remember me, but one day I'm going to step in his office and maybe we can talk about it. But that's something our young men need to see. That's something our young men need to hear. Because the fact is, if you get a tattoo without your mother and father's permission, and it's on your neck, you just whittled down some of your opportunities in America. Mm -hmm. You've already been whittled down because of your skin color. But when you do things out of order, when you go onto social media, and you don't understand how lasting that is, we've got to tell our people to get back to basics. The bottom line is, if you can rap, but you can't read. You can rap, but you can't write. You can rap, but you can't add. You ain't out of order. And you have, and you have to need an accountant, no matter how many millions you make a year Absolutely. for the NFL. You'll need an Absolutely. accountant. Absolutely. And Steve, if not, if not you, go broke, you go broke Absolutely. five years after you leave the NFL. And Steve, thank you so much for that reminder. I remember having that conversation, and it was from my heart, and you just gave it back to me. So that's, that's, that's going full circle. Thank you, brother. Amen. One day, one day I'm going to come into the office. And we'll talk about it, and that's something I'll never forget. And it made me go on to get my master's degree awesome. in finance and economics. All right. All right, Steve. <laughs> because I saw you do, I saw you, wait a minute, I saw you doing what I wanted to do. So I had to see it because I went to an all white university. I was the only black in the class. Mm -hmm. And whenever a black subject came up, they, they responded to me. They looked at you. And I didn't know the answer because I don't speak for all black. <laughs> So the thing of it is, I'm glad that I came over to your office. I'm glad you sat down and talked to me. And I'm glad that when you have a career day, you bring them into the office. Because when I go out to my wife's career day, the first thing they want to know is, what do you drive? How much money you make? That's not, that's not important. What's important is, if you are going to go to a job, be happy in your job. Do something that you love because the chances are, well, I know it's not the chances. You'll be more prosperous if you're doing something that you enjoy rather than doing something out of necessity. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Steve. Uh, Reverend, I was about to say the doors of the church are open. <laughs> we can't do no offertory on the air. That's all right. <laughs> we think they're paying us. That's all right. They're giving something. No, but, but this is interesting because it, it, it dovetails into a conversation I had yesterday on the show, uh, civic responsibility. Yes. And I was tying into black history. I was talked about Morris Dees, and I also talked about George Damon Keith. I said, you know, we, we talk about George Keith and what he's done, the seminal decisions that he's handed over. But I said, Judd Keith wasn't a superman. I mean, he's just like one of us. It was just that he had the courage to do what he did. And I said, but the challenge here is when we sit here, we talk about who's the next Damon Keith? Who is the next Morris Dees? And if we have to scratch our head in finding who that is, then we're in trouble. Yeah. yeah, we didn't do like the, like like a ten year old. We didn't right. I, we didn't identify him early. That is right. true. Mm -hmm. That is and true. nurture them. That is true. So on Sunday, um, we got Akbar. Naim Akbar, ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Seventeen five zero five Second Avenue, Detroit Unity Temple. Our final comments, Ellis. I, I just want to say this here: Dr. Akbar changed my life. You erase him out of my life, I don't get here. And I thank God for Dr. Akbar and the thousands of people I watched him touch when we traveled to Brazil, London, all over the United States. And his last speech is going to be Detroit on Sunday and Tuesday. Take advantage of it, guys. At Charles Wright H. Museum. All right. Uh, his new book is titled New Visions for Black Men. Naim Akbar, Ph.D. Uh, we'll be right back after this break. And we're pivoting, of course, to politics. We know you're waiting. The State of the Union is tonight. Uh, President Trump will deliver his State of the Union tonight. I don't know what to expect or what do you expect. Maybe you have an idea. Have you seen a preview of the speech? 
We will also delve into the 13th congressional district race. Uh, that's becoming a political circus. Uh, if you find out who is in that race, we'll also talk about uh, other issues uh, relating to the United Auto Workers front and center. Is the UAW headed towards implosion? Uh, the big brother in Michigan. We'll be right back after this break.